for the man of the hour. Are you ready? Please welcome to the stage, Lord Bruno. What do you think about all the comedians you saw? All right. Oh, God. Calgary, it's so good to be home. <laughs> Holy cow. I moved, I packed up my little Kia Forte in December of 2021 and decided that I was going to move to the United States of America to chase my comedy dreams. But I ended up in Everett, Washington, so. <laughs> Which is a lot like if Lethbridge and Red Deer fucked and made a meth baby. <laughs> And that's where I am now. <laughs> I also moved to the worst part of Everett. I moved to 128th. It's so dangerous that the McDonald's closes at 9 p.m. for safety. <laughs> I didn't even know people ate McDonald's before 9 p.m. <laughs> that is psychotic. I show up at like 1 a.m. in the drive-thru, shit face, looking for chicken nuggets and honey mustard dip. Am I right? White girls, where are you at? White girls. <laughs> I thought my biggest fear going down to the States was gonna be the gun violence. I didn't ever hold a gun. I've never owned a gun, I've never shot a gun. And when I got down there, like, oh, we need this for protection. I gotta protect my house, I gotta protect my family, I gotta protect myself. And as a Canadian man, I was like, that makes no sense at all. You sound fucking insane. <laughs> and then I got down there, I was like, oh, where can I get one of those protection guns? <laughs> I would feel a lot better if I had one and you didn't. <laughs> I have developed some irrational fears as a Latino Canadian man living in America. My third biggest irrational fear is getting mistaken as an American. <laughs> it's not a great fear, but it's definitely one I have. Right? So much so that I risk my own safety just to prove that I'm not from there. I'll go to the most populated area in all of Seattle. I go to Pike Place Market. I get everybody's attention. I just say some shit that triggers every American everywhere. I go, hey, Chick-fil-A tastes like shit. Like something no American would ever say. And then Kevin looks at his wife like, oh, I don't think he's from around here. I look at Kevin like, you're goddamn right. Now where can I get a poutine, a six pack of Molson Canadian lager? I'm gonna get shit faced and fight a flock of fucking geese. <laughs> And that's what Americans think we do for a fun Friday night. It's weird, I don't know. All you Canadians are like, a flock of geese? I would run away from one single cobra chicken, not fight an entire flock, are you insane? And then Kevin will look at his wife like, I think he's from Germany, I'm pretty sure he's from Germany. My second biggest irrational fear as a Latino Canadian man living in America is getting deported. My first biggest irrational fear is getting deported to the wrong fucking country. <laughs> Would you imagine if I showed up at my doorstep and they're like, you're going home, and I'm like, no, please. Not the country where I can afford health care. <laughs> and then I step off an airplane and I'm in Tijuana, Mexico, holy shit. <laughs> I swear to God, I would make it like five minutes and then boom, burlap sack over the head because I'm just white enough for ransom money, right? <laughs> Next thing I know, I'm tied up in a stool looking at a cartel member and they're like, we need you to call your parents and demand half a million dollars for your safe return back to Canada. And I hate that my mom just laughed at that. <laughs> I would look at Carlos and be like, okay, uh, what time is it? He'd be like, 9 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. And I'd be like, mm, we gotta wait an hour. My dad's watching Seinfeld reruns. He will not answer. <laughs> but in that situation, you gotta make that call. So I would. I'd call up my parents and I have to start the conversation like this. I'd be like, hey, uh, dad, look, I'm not drunk. This is not a story brought to you by alcohol. I'm not doing a little bit, okay? This isn't for the laughs. The cartel has kidnapped me, and they are demanding half a million dollars for my safe return. 
and it would take my parents 82 seconds flat to stop laughing, <laughs> catch their breath, and go, half a million for the fucking middle child? And then hang up for sure. <laughs> And I love that my mom laughed at the beginning of that joke to prove it completely accurate. <laughs> now I'm just looking up like Car at Carlos, like, uh, 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 I'll suck your dick if you let me go. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. Carlos would look at his partner. He'd be like, well, do we put him on the avocado farm? We gotta do something. Anyways, my point is avocado toast is racist. That's really all I'm getting at. <laughs> White people in the room, you might be thinking to yourself, how is that even possible? How is avocado toast racist? That makes no sense at all. White people, you guys took guacamole and tortilla chips and fucked it up, that's how. <laughs> You're like, let's take this perfect dish, get rid of all the flavor, charge $20 a plate and call it a nutritious breakfast. <laughs> when that happened, I was like, that's not gonna work. There's no way they'll ever pay for that. And white people were like, Millennials eat ass for fun. They'll pay $20 for this shit. <laughs> and all four of you that clapped, we all know now that you eat ass. That's nice. <laughs> I'm, I'm enjoying doing American things, though. I'm having a lot of fun down there. I was really excited because I grew up playing baseball my whole life. I was really excited to move to the U.S. that had a baseball, a professional baseball team, the Seattle Mariners, and I was going to a bunch of games. What I didn't realize was my favorite part about going to games was not the actual game. It was hanging out outside the stadium, listening to the psychopath with a megaphone and a big sign preaching the good word of the Lord like a psychopath. <laughs> I heard him say this the other day. I was at the game, this is what he said, around children, women, everybody. He was like, enjoy your game, you sinners, and your beer. Jesus Christ is coming back, and he's going to murder you all. <laughs> I went right up to him. I was like, bro, I got to be honest with you. Last time Jesus Christ paid us a visit, we defeated him with a two-by-four, a hammer, and some nails. I don't know. <laughs> Like, I don't think he's giving off murdering a stadium full of 50,000 people vibes, you know? <laughs> like, if this was a video game, he'd be a level two boss at best. <laughs> right? Like, maybe he could take out the weakest members of society. Maybe he could murder children and Joe Biden on a bicycle. I don't know. <laughs> it's fun, though. I met my first Republican. Holy shit. <laughs> And that was a weird experience for me because, like I said, I don't own guns. And I had a conversation with him. And I started to realize anybody that posts on social media that America needs to change their gun laws are fucking stupid. Hear me out. Hold on. Wait. <laughs> that doesn't mean I'm pro-guns. I mean, it's just never going to happen and you're wasting your time. <laughs> right? Because in 2020, the president at the time made a tweet after a mass shooting where 20 lives were lost in a Walmart. And he said, you know what the problem is? Violent video games. And Walmart was like, you're right. No more Call of Duty. And you know what Walmart kept selling? Fucking guns. <laughs> Stop trying to get them to change. It's never going to happen. It's insane. My dick fell out at a children's play place once. never want that to happen with a beard like mine. <laughs> also, if you didn't have a beard, you just don't want... The beard's not the issue. Here, listen. <laughs> Let me explain. <laughs> I became a godfather. I don't know why. <laughs> I didn't realize I was going to have to spend time with the kid. <laughs> don't worry, it gets better. Relax, he's here. It'll be fine. <laughs> I swear to God, I made it through two episodes of Paw Patrol. I was like, fuck this, we're doing stuff I wanna do now. We're going on a field trip. We go on a field trip, we go to the dollar store, we get Dante a fake mustache, plop that on Dante's face. And then when we get to where we're going, we're walking up to the door and the gentleman at the door is like, sir, no. You cannot bring a toddler into a strip club. 
It is noon on a Wednesday. Get a fucking job. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Look, I'm not that stupid. I didn't think just a fake mustache was gonna get my godchild into a strip club. I had a whole story. I got it in the bouncer's face. I was like, how dare you? Assume somebody's age in 2022. <laughs> This is my grandpa. He very clearly suffers from Benjamin Bunn's disease, you dick. <laughs> Bouncer looked at me, he's like, sir, your godson just took his mustache and put it down his pants. I was like, Dante, what the fuck, man? <laughs> he's just sitting there like, it tickles my pickle, buddy. It tickles my pickle. I was like, grandpa, we're leaving before I get arrested. Oh my God. <laughs> Had to take him to a more age appropriate place for children. Took him to an indoor play facility. I don't know if you've been there recently. If you don't have kids, I hope not. <laughs> They're really cool though. They're so big that if you're with a smaller child, you can go in and play with the kid. That's a bad way to word that. Um, <laughs> me and Dante were in the ball pit. We're splish splashing around, but I'm still wearing my strip club boner concealing pants and they rip. And this is where my dick falls out in a children's play place. And he's four at the time. And we had only been there about five minutes, so he doesn't understand what's going on. He doesn't want to leave. And he throws an absolute tantrum. And now I got to carry this child out of this indoor children's play place with my dick swinging around. And as I'm carrying him out, he's freaking out. Karen comes up to me and, he's like, and she's like, what are you doing with that child? And it was like going home. <laughs> and then she was like, is that your child? And I was like, no, because he's not. <laughs> I do love Dante though. We've become very close. We're buddies, we're pals. I like hanging out with him. Uh, the other day I was babysitting him. It was good to be home and hang out with him. I was cooking him chicken uh, dinosaur nuggets because I'm the best godfather ever. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But Dante caught an attitude. He got in my face. I was like, hey, Dante, go wash your hands. Dinner's almost ready. He was like, no. I was like, yes. He was like, no. And I was like, one, two, two and a half. I'm not your mother. I'll fucking smack you. I swear to God, kid, I'm not patient enough for this. And then he went and washed his hands. He came back, he didn't lose that attitude. He got in my face. He's like, I'm having ice cream for dinner. And I was like, hell no, I'm terrified of your mother. She will kill me. <laughs> Absolutely not. He was like, yes, I was like, no. And then Dante, this little four-year-old son of a bitch was like, one, two, <laughs> two and a half, give me the ice cream or hit you. I'm not afraid of you. <laughs> Smart kid right there. I was like, have the ice cream. Don't tell your mother. <laughs> It's also the day I found out he was lactose intolerant, so fuck me. You know? <laughs> I let him have a sleepover at my house one time. Never again. <laughs> like I said, he's four, so he's about yay high. He's got ginger hair. He decided to pack his overall pajamas. Sound familiar? Chucky the Killer Doll is having a sleepover at my house. <laughs> Now, I don't condone hitting children. <laughs> All right, but Chucky the Killer Doll woke up at about 1.30 a.m. and he was hungry and he wanted a peanut butter sandwich. So he went into the kitchen and he got the bread and he got the knife, but yeah, there was no peanut butter. And so he came and woke me up, but he brought the fucking knife with him. I knocked his little ass out, holy shit. I was like, fuck you, Santa Claus isn't real. I slept awake the whole night. No more sleepovers. <laughs> that feedback is good. That's nice. I don't know where to stand. They were like, step back if that happens, and I'm about to hit my ass against this wall. And I did not put a toy there for pleasure, so I don't really want to get that far back. <laughs> right, dudes? Who's in a pegging? No? Okay. Anyways. <laughs> so I'm single. <laughs> Right. Nobody here is looking for a Juan night stand. Got it. Cool. Whatever. <laughs> I remember before I left Alberta, I matched with a beautiful Latina on Tinder. That was exciting for me for two reasons. Reason number one, I did not know that existed. Because <laughs> Alberta. Um. <laughs> Reason number two, 
I don't know if white people know this, but when ethnic people bring white girls home to meet our ethnic grandparents, said grandparents beat the fuck out of us. I'm like, Grandma, what's wrong? She's like, you'll never eat well again. I was like, Grandma, that's racist. You can't say that. <laughs> the only non-white lady in the room laughed at that. <laughs> I'm kidding. There's a few of you, but it worked. Not only did I match with this beautiful Latina, she also sent the first message. This is what she said to me. She said, is your grandma still alive? Does she live in Canada? And can she cook authentic Spanish chorizo sausage? And I didn't think anything of it. I was like, yeah, grandma's tacos the best. Maybe we'll go on a couple dates and you'll find out. And then she was like, good, that's my grandma now too. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> Settle down, Guadalupe. <laughs> Let's go on a couple dates before we get married. Relax. She was like, no, stupid. We're not getting married. We're not going on dates. Nothing sexual. I just want your grandma's cooking. <laughs> Think of this more like a step-sibling situation. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if you've been on Pornhub recently, but you know, I think my odds just improved. <laughs> I've been friend zone too many times. I wasn't going down this weird step sibling zone. I did what any respectful gentleman should do in this situation. I sent an unsolicited dick pic. I'm not proud of it. You shouldn't do that, sir. Don't be a dick pic guy. Her response was, ew, what are you doing? And I was like, look, you wanted authentic Spanish chorizo sausage? This is the best one Canada has to offer. my favorite joke because there's always a couple dudes in the audience that clap for my dick. It's weird, but I like it. <laughs> Who's drinking tonight? <laughs> Scaredy, get up! <laughs> this is water. <laughs> yeah, anybody that knows me is like, fuck off, no it isn't. <laughs> Are you guys having fun? Yes. And I was, I love that I pointed at two people and six of you were like, uh-huh. Yeah. Which just screams we pre-drank in the parking lot. Now I know, that's cool. Thanks for the invite. Yeah. You're on a date, relationship. Yeah. Oh, fuck, I know you. Hold on. <laughs> I was like, let's pick on somebody I don't know. <laughs> He's got that hat on, and I was like, never mind, I'm out. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> I regret everything. One day I'll gain a fan that's not family or friends, you know? <laughs> that's the point of all of this. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> we'll sit in that one for a minute, that's fine. <laughs> Got weird in here, but that's okay. I'm okay with it. It's video. We can edit it. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Plenty of wiggle room. Somebody make a mistake and make some noise if you don't know me. Woo! Woo! Ow! Yeah, you four fucked up just now. <laughs> What's your name, sir? That was the most Kensington shit I've ever heard. <laughs> He's like slouched back in his gray hoodie. I'm Remy and I play the guitar on the street, not for the money, but for the love of the music. <laughs> Earl Grey tea, no tea, please. <laughs> Do you like any cream or sugar with that? No. <laughs> I'll just put toxic mud in there. It's good for my skin. What do you do for work, Remy? I'm a massage therapist. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I didn't nail it, but I was pretty goddamn close. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> Holy shit, so you just rub bodies all day. Nice. <laughs> Good for you, man. I haven't rubbed a body other than my own in like five years. So. <laughs> I'm happy for you. How long have you been doing that? Five years. <laughs> I told you to call me, goddammit, Remy! 
I would have sucked. <laughs> Had I known, I would have to wait another five years, you know? Yeah. Oh, well, who else made noise when I said that? Red hair, I see you. How you doing, miss? Good. Good, what's your name? Sandra. Sandra. Is that your boyfriend next to you? No. Oh, just a fucking friend? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's dope. That's good. How long you been in the friend zone, sir? Five years. <laughs> to somber the mood, but I'm going to talk about some serious issues, okay. talk about some tough subjects. That's okay to laugh, or you have permission. <laughs> Don't feel uncomfortable. Just a little bit. Jason can turn up the volume in the special. It's fine. <laughs> I think there's a lot of problems with the world today, not just in America. I think the biggest issue is the internet. Oh my God. <laughs> the internet is a problem, and I have the solution. All right, from now on, if you want to access the internet, you have to answer a skill testing question to get Wi-Fi. And it won't be difficult. It'll be something very simple. Like, do you think 10 old white men in Texas should make laws about abortion? <laughs> and if you answer yes, you live in 1930, you don't get electricity, get your ass outside, motherfucker. <laughs> back to the Stone Age, Bernadette. <laughs> I hate Facebook. It's another big issue in our society today. Facebook is a goddamn problem. Now, not for all the reasons you think. Uh, my biggest issue with Facebook is Facebook memories. Uh, if you're unfamiliar, it's just a 10-year reminder that you used to be a fucking loser. Um, <laughs> I had one pop up the other day, and it just said that it was a status. It said, I'm really upset Stacy wouldn't come to the dance with me. Sad face. And it got one laugh react and one comment. The comment said, ha, 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 and it was my fucking grandma. And then her comment got 37 laugh reacts. I was like, what is happening here? I don't feel good about this. I was very upset. Again, my grandma's a goddamn gangster, though. I love my grandma. I can't say grandma. It was very clearly not water. Anyways, um, she's a gangster. I love my grandma. About three and a half years ago to this day, my grandma was on a sea train platform hanging out with a friend. Somebody came along who was going through a tough time, high on pills and drugs and alcohol and whatever, and uh, she pushed my grandma in front of a sea train. And she broke her back. Ambulance rushed her to the hospital. Doctor said she had a 2% chance of living. And like the goddamn gangster she is, she is still alive today. <laughs> On that ambulance ride with her friend, that friend proposed to her, and I got to MC their wedding. Aww. Sounds adorable until I had to encourage the crypt keeper to make out with my paraplegic grandma, so. <laughs> That was pretty fucking weird, I don't know. <laughs> She's a sweetheart though. I like to visit her, we hang out. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, uh, and there hasn't been like any, imagine a bit, nobody knows this, but I recorded my first comedy album. Mm -hmm. And we had to, thank you, it's very exciting. I've been with a couple friends. Mm -hmm. Comes out June 1st. But we needed a uh, title for the album and cover us for the album. Yeah. And so I got you the first ever poster of the album. That is amazing. And it's for J R J R J Oh, gotcha. I haven't seen the new So this is the poster. Oh, wow. And that's the cover for my comedy album. Oh, my God. And uh, we named it 2% Chance. Because that's what they told me you had. Uh, she talks more shit than I do, which is fun. 
Uh, last time I went to go visit her, she said, you know what, I'm so happy I found love. When are you gonna find love? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know, Grandma, if I could pop my mouth out and suck dick without teeth, I'd be able to find love too. You know? Like the only person that I clapped was the same one that ate ass. I like that. Good for you, man. That's nice. Let that freaky flag fly. In uh, in 2017, I uh, I came out. Usually it gets a clap, but all of you are like, I don't think he's gay. I'm, like, so I'm pretty sure he's not gay. <laughs> I came out as a Latino, let me explain. <laughs> let me explain. For the first 25 years of my life, I went by John Paul, despite the fact that my legal name is Juan Pablo. That's how my parents raised me. Uh, I have three brothers, Dallas Tyler, Brody Alexander, Michael Bradley, Juan Pablo, so. <laughs> Remy, you didn't laugh, let me explain. <laughs> One of those things is not like the others, okay? <laughs> the reason my parents named me Juan Pablo but raised me as John Paul is because my dad did not want me to experience the same level of racism him and his brothers experienced. And I thought that was very sweet but also very sad. I don't think we should be ashamed of who we are. And then I went to America and I was like, my name's John Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pull it out whenever I get pulled over, you know? They're like, license and registration, please. I was like, do you want the real name or the fake name? They're like, put down the bottle of tequila. I was like, it's very clearly Jed, you racist. It's tough, though. I never, uh, I never really experienced racism until I moved to the United States of America. I was headlining a show about three weeks ago, and it's crazy that this joke ended up in a special, only working on it for three weeks, but it's 100% true. I was in Aberdeen, Washington which is worse than Everett, so. <laughs> and as I came on stage, they were like, please welcome Juan Pavel to the stage. And Karen in the front row was like, really? <laughs> She's like, I don't believe you're Latino. <laughs> and I was like, well, let me explain. Here's the thing. My dad is Guatemalan, my mom's Hungarian, and that's how I ended up like this. And she's like, oh, you should just be white. That's better. <laughs> And then I looked at her husband, and I was like, I'm gonna face fuck your wife to shut her up before we get the show started, but that's not the point. <laughs> she deserved it, fuck you. Did you hear the race that she did? She said, you feel bad for her? Are you kidding me? <laughs> but it was weird because I've had this thing where my entire life, I, will, I never felt like I fit in, you know? Like, I didn't feel like I was that close with my white side of my family because history, you know, I didn't want to <laughs> identify that way. And I didn't really gain the approval of the Latin side because I was in Florida once, Miami, and some dude is like, get Fidel! And I'm like, I know I look like him, God damn it. <laughs> I'm Canadian. Oh, you're the son of the illegitimate blackface prime minister, okay. <laughs> it's my fault, shouldn't have been spoken to Cuban, it's fine. Dealing with this lady in Aberdeen, Washington was really difficult, like I said, for me. And there's been instances in my life where I felt like I had to prove my Latin side, right? And I have the perfect story to do so, okay? It's about 87% true. I'll tell you which parts aren't after I tell it. <laughs> right? I was about seven years old. My Aunt Vivian used to babysit my cousins and my siblings, and one day, we were getting ready for school, and I went up to her, and I was like, Aunt Vivian, my throat is sore. I don't think I can go to school. And she responded, you're not fucking staying home. I'm watching telenovela all day. No, thank you. <laughs> I was like, Auntie, I can't even talk. She's like, okay, I have a plan. Here's what we're going to do. You're going to go wake up your Uncle Jorge. He's going to get your Uncle Jose out of the cupboard. <laughs> and then you're going to go to school. And I was like, holy shit, I have a second uncle in a cupboard? <laughs> Next thing I know, head tilted back, Quervo right down the hatch. <laughs> Sore throat gone. 
If you ask Auntie Vivian, she had the cure for COVID 25 years ago. <laughs> we didn't have to lock down. Now I'm just standing at a bus stop like, guys, I don't know if I can go to second grade math. I think I need to go to Alcoholics Anonymous. <laughs> Okay, the part that wasn't true, it wasn't the bottle, it was just a shot, but anyways, it doesn't matter. <laughs> the point is, I'm Latino as fuck. <laughs> and I can see her looking at me right now, and she's gonna beat the shit out of me after the show. <laughs> and she's nodding her <laughs> It was so funny, she's like, when are you gonna write some Spanish material? I was like, you're gonna regret asking that. <laughs> Here's hoping Netflix picks this up and everybody knows Aunt Vivian as the person that loves vodka. Or Cuervo or whatever, I'm drunk, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know the worst part is, it's Uncle Jorge, he was passed out, I had to wake him up. It's okay, it's fine, it's, he's a lovely individual. <laughs> we got drunk one time and we were sitting on the doorstep, he was like, I have to go to the hospital, I can't breathe. <laughs> I was like, dude, you're talking. That makes no fucking sense. <laughs> He's like, no, I can't breathe. I'm like, you're breathing. I promise you, you're breathing. <laughs> and then he went to the hospital. He got like four bags of IV. And then we showed up at his place to pick up our vehicles the next day. He was good. We were a bag of shit. I hated him ever since. Going down to America, the toughest part was switching over all my identification. I thought that that was gonna be easy. I was very, very wrong. I went into the DMV, sassy black lady looked at me and she's like, mm, child, I got bad news for you. And I was like, oh God, am I getting deported already? <laughs> that did not take long. She's like, no, 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 you're from Alberta. If you were from BC, we could just give you your license. But because you're from Alberta, you have to take the written and the driver's test again. I love that the bald old white Oompa Loompa yelled out racism. <laughs> dude drives a 38 inch tire pickup truck and he's like, that's racist. And I'm like, dude, come on. I see the balls hanging from the back of your tailgate. Shut up, I know you. That's very uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't think I like that. You know what? I don't even want to tell no more jokes. I just, I just feel like I got sexually harassed by my grandpa. That's weird. It's fucked up. I was in this, uh, I was in this class at like 6 p.m. on a Tuesday. It was dark and dingy. Uh, I had to take that written driver's test. And it was just surrounded by children and immigrants because that's who takes them. Um, <laughs> And I was nervous as fuck being in this classroom, right? I had been driving for about 14 years at this point. As she handed out the test, my hand was literally shaking with the pen in my hand. I was so nervous, so nervous, because I didn't know if school shooters carried over in the situation, so. <laughs> but I saw Cole sitting in the back and he had his black hoodie up blasting metal music, so I was very worried. I was like, let that kid pass or else I'm dead for sure. <laughs> Worst part about growing up in Alberta is applying for jobs with the name Juan Pablo. Right, y'all got the benefit of hearing how it's pronounced. Human resource Heather has to read it on my resume and hope she gets it right, and she never does. <laughs> Juan is spelled J-U-A-N, and if you sound that out in Caucasian ignorance, you get Juan. <laughs> it's not. Remy, it's not Juan. Rudy, it's not you, Anne. I am not a little girl in an attic during World War II writing in a diary. <laughs> a little too close to World War III for some people for that joke, okay. I went for an interview once, Human Resource Heather greeted me at the door, she was real polite. So thank you so much for taking time out of your day. We're really excited to get to meet you, see if you'd be a good fit with our team. Before we get started, can I grab you anything? Maybe a water or a coffee? Juan. <laughs> I was like, two cream, one sugar, please. I did not correct her. I was so poor, I needed the job. 
<laughs> and as we're going through the interview, I started to realize I was very underqualified. I was never going to get hired, right? And she kept calling me Joanne. And eventually I snapped. I was like, that's not my name. And then she was like, did I mix up the resumes again? <laughs> I'm like, you're in charge of human resources? <laughs> I was like, right resume, wrong name. It's pronounced Juan. She's like, oh, really? I was like, I think so. <laughs> she was like, oh, that's weird. It's just, you don't even look Korean. What? <laughs> I was like, why do you think I'm Korean? She's like, your name's Juan. I was like, yeah, why do you think I'm Korean? She's like, you know, <laughs> Juan Tan Soup. And I was like, kill yourself for sure. <laughs> kill yourself. Come hang out after the show. <laughs> I will never forget meeting my first Republican in America. I was down there for two days, and I had the funniest experience of my entire life. I was at Walmart. He didn't tell me he was a Republican, but there were signs. Like, he was white, he had a mullet, and he was working at Walmart wearing the sweatpants that he bought at Walmart, like I was able to crack that Da Vinci code. <laughs> I needed help finding towels. I was like, Trevor, where can I find towels? And then we struck up a conversation and out of nowhere, Trevor was like, I like you, what's your name? I was like, oh, I'm Juan Pablo, nice to meet you. And then Trevor was like, oh. You're not from around here, are you? And I was like, no, bro, I'm from Canada and I fucking broke Trevor, holy shit. <laughs> He turned so pale immediately. He looked like he just found out Obama got elected for a third time. <laughs> you just see the hamster wheel spinning in his head. He's like, build the wall, build the wall, build the wall. Fuck, which wall, which wall, which wall, which wall? <laughs> when he finally came to, he said the funniest thing I have ever heard in my entire life. I laughed so hard. It was amazing. He was like, so you mean to tell me your name's Juan Pablo? And I was like, see. <laughs> Remy, that's yes in Spanish. <laughs> He's like, and you're from Canada? I was like, uh-huh. And then he went, so you mean to tell me the snow Mexicans are real? <laughs> I was like, yeah, bro, we're coming for your job. Ah! I'm done feeling like I can't fit in. I'm done being confused about who I am or what my heritage is. In that moment, Trevor was being ignorant as fuck, but he called me a snow Mexican, which means two things. I'm Latin, and I'm from Canada, and I'm fucking proud of it. I'm a snow Mexican, and I talk shit, and I thank you all for being here tonight. One more time for one, four.